In this video, we're going to do some prepping to set up our Maya for the modding workflow. First thing we're going to want to do is grab the AB weight lifter. So we're going to open up our browser and below the video in the description, you'll see a link to AB weight lifter. This is a very useful tool for Maya that I think anyone who deals with any kind of rigging or skinning inside of Maya should have this tool. This is like pure gold. I'm telling you right now. Anyhow, so go ahead and click on the link to AB Weightlifter, AB Weightlifter, and it'll take you to Super Crumbly. And you want to go ahead and scroll down and you should find at the very bottom, you should see free downloads right here. I scrolled down a bit. You want download AB Weightlifter underscore one underscore nine point zip. Just go ahead and download this. I'm just going to open it. So I'll click OK. It'll download really fast because it's just a text file. And we want to go ahead and drag this into our Autodesk Scripts folder. So we're going to go ahead and move this archive over here. And wherever you installed Maya 2016, you should have installed this prior to beginning this tutorial series. It is a prerequisite that you have Maya 2016 installed. Go ahead to your installation directory. Mine was Autodesk, Maya 2016. And I opened up my Scripts folder. And I just gonna, you know, it opens up like this. I scrolled down a bit and go ahead and just drag it in here. As you can see, I've already done this. So I just grabbed this and I dragged it and I dropped it into this directory. So you can see it right here. And go ahead and close that zip once you've dragged it into your Maya 2016 scripts directory. Now what we need to do is source this script when Maya loads. So we don't always have to continuously source the script. All right, so what you wanna do is create a text file. So right click, say new, and you're gonna create a text file. So I'll click text document and I will call it user setup dot M E L just like I've typed it there. Make sure you change the extension. It has to be dot M E L. If you cannot see extensions or change them for that matter, you need to go find a tutorial on how to turn on show extensions. You know, you need to be able to see extensions to change that extension to a mill file. Once you've done that, go ahead and press enter to save it, which I've already done this. So I'm just going to put a two on the end. It's going to say, if you change the file name extension, the file may become unusable. If you want to change it. Yes. Now I'm just going to delete this because I already have a user setup file here. I just put a two on it just to show you how to finish saving it. So I'll just go ahead and delete this. So I'll click yes, delete it. And we want to open up our user setup.mil. So just right click on it and go ahead and say edit in notepad plus plus. And it's saying that something doesn't exist. So I'm going to keep that. Yes. So here we are in our user setup. Yours will not have anything in it, but I'm going to zoom in here and you should path your file. Now, I don't care where you stored yours, but wherever you did, the code is source, double quote, and then you want to put the drive wherever your Autodesk scripts is. So in my case, it was E colon slash slash. Now, instead of one slash, you always put two slashes for the file path. So you can see instead of just typing in E slash Autodesk slash and whatever, I put two slashes. Now, one quick way you can do this is I can just delete all that and I can come up here and in our scripts directory, I'm going to click up here. I'm just going to hit control plus C, copy that, then come over here and hit control plus V. And then I'll just come in and I'll add an extra slash everywhere that there is a slash. And on the end, I'll put two slashes and I will type in the AB weightlifter.mel double quote and end it with a semicolon. So just type it just like this, the path to your scripts for your Autodesk where you place this AB weightlifter and then the AB weightlifter.mil. This way you can source this. All right, I'm just gonna delete this because I've already done this. I have it right here. So you just gotta make sure that you source the AB weightlifter script. Okay, then hit control plus S to save it and you're done with that. So now that that's taken care of, you can go ahead and close your script directory. So I'll just hit X and close that window out. And now we're gonna hop in Maya real quick to do a little bit more setup. So go ahead and open up your Maya 2016. I have mine down here in my taskbar. If you had Maya open before you changed that user mail, close down Maya and reopen it. That way it automatically sources that script. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new shelf. You'll see a shelf up here. There'll be these tabs. These are called shelves. Okay, that's a shelf where you can put stuff. Now, I've already created a shelf called Fallout 4. I'm going to create a new shelf, and that way we can recreate it together. So I'll go ahead and just drop down this little cog wheel here. I'm going to select New Shelf. Right, with New Shelf, I'm going to call this one Fallout 4 Tutorial. That way, 
we're on the same page here. Now it'll be an empty shelf where we can put buttons. Okay, this would be quick access buttons. The first thing we're gonna want is a bone fix script. So in my browser, we're gonna open up our browser and we're gonna go to the bone fix link. It's under the video. Again, links for these tutorials are always gonna be below the video. So below the video, look for the bones fix link and you'll see that it will take you to Mediafire. There's a text document. Once you just go ahead and mouse over from the bottom, just mouse over the whole thing right here and just drag it up and make sure you're not selecting the numbers. You just want what's in here. Just hit control plus C to copy that to your clipboard. Then we're going to minimize this and inside of Maya, we're going to come down here and in the lower right hand corner, you're going to see this weird looking little icon with a semicolon and two brackets. Let's go ahead and open that up. I'm just going to go ahead and delete all this. And you should see the script editor pop up. Yours might be a bit smaller. It might be scrunched up like this. You can go ahead and scroll it up like that if you want. And inside the mail section, we're just going to hit control plus V to paste what we just copied from that web page. Okay, this is a script that I wrote for Caliente. I was a alpha tester for Outfit Studio and she needed a mail script and I wrote this for her. I don't know why she has not shared this with the community. It's essential. I told her she could. Um, anyways, this is it. So you can go ahead and click file and we want to save this script to the shelf. So after you paste it in here, go to file, save script to shelf. All right. We're going to call this bone fix. Okay. And just go ahead and click. Okay. And that's going to put it right up here. Don't click it. It won't do anything. All right. We'll, we're going to be using this later. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and close this. We don't need that open right this moment. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the bind skin options to our shelf. So we're going to go to modeling, drop this down. You want to find rigging, select rigging and under skin, you want to drop this down and we're not going to source this. We're going to create a shelf for the options. So hold down control and shift on your keyboard. Then with those held down, click the little box. The little boxes is the option. So we're going to click the one next to bind skin. That'll put this awkward looking fella here. And now if I click that, it's going to open up the vine skin options. One of the things I want you to do real quick, and this should save to your options if you set it. I don't know if it will unless you actually use it. But go ahead and make sure you set max influences to four. Look at my options here. Make sure your options are identical to the ones I have set in this window, okay? But the important one is max influences have to be set to four because just like with Skyrim, Fallout 4 only allows four bones to be assigned to a single point in space, a single vertice. So go ahead and make sure you set that to four and then you can close that. So now we have that up there. The next thing we want to add up there is copy skin weights. All right, so we're going to go to skin again. We're going to drop this down. We're going to go to skin weights. And we're going to hold down control plus shift, and we're going to click this. Now, we don't need the options for this. We just have to click this. But before we leave this, we're also going to open the options. And what we want to do is closest point on surface and make sure your influence association is set one to one. All right, and then you can go ahead and close this. All right, that's taken care of. So now we have our copy skin weights. The next thing we want is remove unused influences. So we're going to drop down skin again. We're going to go down to edit influences and you'll see remove unused influence. So hold down control plus shift on your keyboard and click on it. And that's going to put our UI up there, remove unused influences. Don't worry about what these do right now. I'll explain this as we move through the tutorial series. And the last one, we have to create another script. So we're going to open up our script window. I'm going to scroll down. We're just going to delete everything that we put in there before. So make sure you scroll down, just delete all that. And what we want to do is type in AB weight lifter. Remember that script we added and we decided to source? We just want to type that in AB weight lifter, put a semicolon on the, actually, I don't even think you need that. Just AB weight lifter. Just put that in there and you can go ahead and say file, save script to shelf. And we're going to call it AB weight. Right. So just type in AB weight and click OK. Now we're going to test to make sure that that actually works. So AB weight, go ahead and click it and you should get a window will pop up. If this does not pop up, that means that user setup dot mel that we did in the at the beginning of the video, you didn't type in the source to that script correctly. You need to go back, do it again, close down Maya, open up Maya and keep testing it until that sucker pops up. Now we're going to go ahead and click close on this and we want to save our shelf. So we're going to drop down this little cogwheel and we're going to say save all shelves. This way we make sure that our new shelf is saved here. I'm probably going to delete this one because it's sort of tutorials. And as you can see, I already have one. 
just have two of them right now. The last thing I wanted to do in this video is I wanted to go ahead and have you set up your viewport and your tabs over here because you probably don't have it set up like this if you're new to Maya, just so you can be on the same page as me as we follow through the series. So first thing is you want to hold down Alt and press B a few times. Yours probably looks like this. Hit Hold down Alt and press B until you get to this one because this one looks a lot better than the default one that Maya loads with. So now you have the same background. I also want to get this little hut up here with these verts edges faces. Let's get this up here. So you want to go, go to display, drop this down, go to heads up display, and you want to find poly count and go ahead and check that. See if I uncheck it, it disappears. And I go to heads up display, turn poly count back on. That gives us these options. So we'll know if what we have selected. And we'll talk about this a bit more later. And finally, we want these tabs over here to the right. So whenever you click one of these, it probably pops up like this right here. Let me grab one of these, drag it out. You might see it, it'll be popped up like this. And this is up here, right? These are these right here. So what you do is you just click one of them and it'll pop up maybe like this. And you wanna drag it over to the side and it's not wanting to pop up over there. There we go. You got to kind of you you can kind of see how it moved out. You see that? Let me just drag this off again. If I drag this off to the side, you'll kind of see right there. It kind of pops out. Just release it. Then open up the next one and drag it over to the side, just like you did with this one and this one here. So that way they're all set up over here. All right. We definitely want these put up so they're easier. And yeah, whatever. And the last one is modeling toolkit. You can also put that over here. Just make sure all your tabs are over here on the right hand side. And to do that, again, you just grab it at the top, drag it over until it allows you to dock it. So you want to dock these over here. So now your UI for Maya should look the same as mine. You should have your tabs on the right and you sh your should have this nice gradient background and this here. And also if you wanted your grid to be the same setup as mine, you can, I'll show that to you real fast. So I'll just drop up display. You'll see grid and there's options for the grid. I'll open that up. And if you just copy and make your options the same as mine, then click apply and close. So I have it 500 by 500 by 50 and then click apply and close. Your grid will be the same size as mine, but that's really does not matter. So to make sure that everything saves, first we're gonna go up to file. We're gonna drop this down. We're gonna click save preferences. We're also gonna double check our shelf, click save all shelves on that little cogwheel. Then we're gonna go to file and exit. So you don't have to save this scene, just click don't save and let it close down. This way, if you close Maya cleanly, the next time you open it up, everything will save when you close it. So that way, the next time we open it, it'll all open correctly. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and extract the Bethesda archive. We got some archives that we need to extract in order to work through the modding process. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post below the video and click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.